I received a link from a woman who's a medium who has found me on social media and we've been, we've been talking and it's fine. One of the things she says is that there's evidence for psychics solving crimes, you know, murdered victims, finding victims, or at least helping the police. And I I'm not aware of any of that kind of information. I don't know where she's getting that from. She says, well, you just Google and it's there. It's not hard to find this information. So I said, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you, can you please give me that information? And so she did, she sent me a link. Now I thought it was her idea of the best evidence or mediumship helping solve crimes. But as we went through, my Facebook friends and I went through the different stories in here and we found fault with all of them. Um, she was kind of defensive. You know, I, I totally understand that she thought it was good. But she also said, I didn't go and research all those stories. This is just what came up there. Google search. There's probably a lot better ones out there. And I thought, okay, well, why didn't you just give me the much better ones instead of giving me this if you didn't find that it was all that great but i thought it might be kind of fun let's let's look at some of these stories because when i was searching for you know what actually happened in each of these incidents it's a reader's digest i remember reader's digest when i was growing up my parents had a subscription we had tons of these things and this is an article written in 2021 and also in 2023, by somebody named Lauren Kahn, C-A-H-N. And it's the same article has been published twice because I found two different um, instances of it published. And everything's the same. It's just a different date on it, which is kind of odd. But anyway, it has 20 mysteries actually solved by psychics. So let's let's check out this first one I did. I hadn't heard of it before. Let me show you the article so you can see what I'm looking at. And when I was looking on the internet for information about this Reader's Digest thing, and see all the ads on here, um, I was pretty surprised that I didn't know a lot about it here. Let's see. So the Reader's Digest is not a notable, reliable source. I do tons of Wikipedia work. I train people to use Wikipedia. I know that if we try to use an, a citation like Reader's Digest to prove anything, we would be totally laughed at. It, it's just, you can't use Reader's Digest. There's not, it's not considered having journalistic integrity. They repeat stories, they condense stories, and they put them out there in order to get clicks and views. And as looking at this, you know, Kenny Biddle from CFI, who's the lead investigator, paranormal investigator for Center for Inquiry, he was looking at this and he says, it's just clickbait. This is this is nonsense. But we, you know, we were still kind of interested in figuring out a little bit more. But you can see. Just because some so-called psychics are full of hooey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, a psychic played an invaluable role in solving each of these mysteries. Well, that's a claim that can be tested. That's that's a statement that they're making a fact, right? So it doesn't mean that there's no one out there who has psychic abilities. Well, I mean, how many do you have to look at? How many how many cases do you have to look at before you can say that nobody has psychic abilities? I mean, a hundred, a thousand, 50 million before you say there are none. This is awful. Okay. So looking at this, now let's just take a quick glance at it really quick. Um, there are these short paragraphs and like it says here, it has a link. Um, it doesn't mean that there aren't cases in which psychics haven't played an important role, have played an important role, either in helping to identify new evidence or in confirming defect, uh, detectives are on the right track. 
In fact, the CIA maintains a repository of information used about the use of paranormal resources for crime investigation. They make it available to the public. So I'm thinking, okay, if I click on this, I'm going to get a list of the CIA using psychics, right? So if you click on it, let's open it in a new tab. It's seven secrets the CIA doesn't want you to know. And it's got um, all sorts of information about how often they read tweets, um, a secret museum, uh, investigation of UFOs and on you. It's a paragraph there. Starbucks does not allow people to use names and their statues are mysterious. And that's it. Oh, no, no. Torture methods and secretly produced movies on the side. And that's it. There's nothing to do with psychics. It has something to do with UFOs, but that is, that's like clickbait. You know, you, you read the line and you say, this looks really interesting. And then you say, you find out that it's not what you thought it was. And if you look through these things here, it te tells you like, this is the first um, disappearance with a psychic supposedly has helped, helped out. Andre Dingle. And if you go down here, Here's two paragraphs. This is the Reader's Digest. And they give you the facts as they say them. And then it says, here are more incredible female firsts from history. That has zero to do really with the disappearance or psychics. And then in this one, here's another one. 19 of the strangest mysteries that have yet to be solved and probably will never be. There's another. 12 unsolved mysteries. This is 50 of the strangest and solved mysteries from each state. So this is the definition of clickbait. You know, you're 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 drawn in. It's just to keep you clicking on the article and seeing ads, hopefully clicking on the ads. Look at all these ads right up here that are appearing all over the place. So this is definitely another example of how it is not a reliable source. This is not uh, this is where not where you should be drawing your information for are psychics real? Are they able to help uh, solve crimes and so on? It's just interesting that this was given to me as here's an example of here's here's what you skeptics should be looking for when <laughs> when the evidence is right there showing you how obviously psychics are solving crimes. I'm like, well, that's not very good evidence. So I started looking through these and it was really interesting because there's some old stories in here. Okay, the first story that they have, let's look at this because, you know, I did something. Okay, it's two paragraphs long. The disappearance of this guy named Andre Dingle, D-A-I-G-L-E. So in 1987, he's 27 years old and he's out for hanging out with friends and they're playing pool. and he starts drinking and then he's never seen alive again. His news of his disappearance reaches his sister who lives in Southern California. This had happened in New Orleans. So she's in Southern California and she sought help from a psychic named Rosemary Kerr, K-E-R-R. -R. And Rosemary Kerr is, is picking up with New Orleans police who didn't suspect foul play had left off. So Kerr placed a finger on a photo of Andre and sensed immediately that he was dead. According to her testimony in the murder trial, um, she correctly identified where his body would be found in a New Orleans swamp. New Orleans is just all swamps, isn't it? I've never been there, but it's like waterlogged. It is not... There, there's water everywhere so that would be a good guess that's what i would say i'd say oh well that wasn't really hard to guess a, a swamp okay um the discovery helped break the case which resulted in the conviction of two men who ended up testifying that they killed this guy for sport okay so that's that's not all relevant right the the, the relevant part is that the psychic um supposedly according to reader's digest put her finger on a picture of this man and said to the sister, this is where you can find the body. No. Care placed a finger on the photo of 
of Andre and sensed immediately he was dead. According to the testimony in the murder trial that followed. Okay. She also correctly identified where his body would be found in a New Orleans swamp. All right. This will be important in a minute why she didn't say he was dead. She sensed he was dead, but she didn't tell the sister he was dead. Okay. Now, so I pulled up, I Googled and Googled and Googled. And I mean, I didn't do a scholarly report on this. This is, I, I just pulled up what I could find. Now, if you can't find good, reliable sources for something within a couple, you know, 20 minutes, and it's something from modernish times, you know, when we have access to newspapers and newspapers.com and other places, we should be able to pull these kinds of these things up. So if there's really great evidence out there of this, it should be fairly easy to find. I mean, it's, we have Google, we have all kinds of ways of searching for things. And this is a sensational story. So if there is evidence that a psychic did this, the media would have not hid this. <laughs> if they would have run with it, it would have been like huge news. It would have been a big deal. Right. So what I did, I found two articles. Now, there's a zillion articles out there, but the articles I found were from the psychics saying, yes, I, I did solve this, you know, and I testified and I was, I was amazing, you know, and I found like paranormal sites or true crime sites, and they were just embellishing, just repeating what the Reader's Digest said. <clears throat> That's not evidence. That's just noise. Clickbait. People trying to get your money, right? So I found two articles. One is from the AP, Associated Press. And it's an article from June of 18, 18, 1987. I do a lot of genealogy. <laughs> I guess I've been living in the 1800s for a while there. And this article that I found, and I will, I guess I could pull it over here so you guys can see it. Let me put it on my screen so you can see this because I'm sure you're curious. All right. Now, the, the details of the crime are really not as important as the... I mean, I don't really want to get into that. I, I don't, I'm not into this, this idea of exploiting somebody's murder and death. It, it's awful. I'm just really interested in the psychic claims. So the police say two men, police, two men say they killed just to see if they could kill. Right. And this happened in Louisiana and New Orleans. And the idea is two men arrested after be found, being found in a missing man's truck said that they killed him just because they wanted to find out what it was like to kill somebody now this article is written right about the same time that the that it happened so it's very very close in time and what ends up happening is they found um okay here's a story the the sister-in-law okay now I, you don't need to read it because i don't want you to have to sit there and read it i'll give you the links it'll put in i'll put it in the description of the youtube video the sister-in-law, a few days after this guy has been reported missing, they filed an, a, a missing person report. And the sister-in-law is living in the same area in New Orleans. And she's out putting up posters, you know, missing. My, my brother-in-law is missing. And as she's out there putting up posters early in the morning, um, I believe it was a Friday, a truck drives by with two men in it, and it's her brother-in-law's truck the guy who's missing. And she goes and she flags down a police officer that's coming by. And she tells the police officers what's going on. And the police officer goes after the truck, pulls them over. They had weapons and everything in the car and arrests the men. Okay. So they, the, the two men who are arrested, and like I said, their, their names are not important at the moment. They're arrested and they, one of them leads the police to the body. And the body is found. Okay, you ready? Now, remember the psychic said that the body would be found in a swamp in New Orleans. They said, uh, they led him to the, to, the, uh, to the body. And the body is found off of the highway. Let me just make sure I have this right. 
the way they tell the story, it's all mixed together. Um, all right. Okay. They found him wrapped in a, the body inside of a sofa, wrapped up in curtains and nailed a piece of plywood to the bottom of the couch. And they found it off the highway, I believe. And he was strangled and he was beaten with a hammer. They loaded, oh, they loaded the body inside a sofa, wrapped in curtains, and nailed a piece of plywood to the bottom. And they took it and they dropped it off on the side of the highway. And they led the police to the, the dead body. So that is not what the psychic said, according to Reacher's Digest. According to Reader's Digest, the psychic said that she put her finger on the picture of the guy. I guess she was living in, in Southern California or something, because that's where the sister was. And, and they saw each other in person. And she was able to sense that the man was dead and that his body would be found in a swampy area of New Orleans. And in fact, it was found along a highway in a couch, in a couch, wrapped up in curtains with a plywood nail to the bottom. So that's completely different, right? Completely different. So the final article I found, and we're ending at the end of our story here, and you can be the judge if you think that the psychic actually helped the place. The final article is a New York Times, uh, Los Angeles Times. And let me just quickly share the screen so you can take a look at this as well. I'm not going to show it long enough for you to sit there and read it. But this is a, again, it's also, all these ads come up. It's also right after. So it happened. So it was 1988. This article was written. And this is there to, you know, in, right after the trial. Because the man was murdered in 87. This article is written in 88 and it talks about the psychic tells court the court of how she helped to solve the murder. So let's see what she actually says. It's written by the New York, New Los Angeles Times, and that's a reliable source. You can usually trust what they say because they have journalistic integrity. In other words, if they get something really wrong, they will probably correct it. All right. So it's, you know, we can argue about that, but if you really want to argue about it, she says, now this is, she says, she testified she helped crack a Louisiana homicide case last June from her home 2,000 miles away. And the, the man pleaded guilty and he's sentenced in prison. So this woman, Rosemary Kerr, took the stand to tell how she saw, helped solve the murder of this guy in New Orleans. So they brought her all the way to New Orleans for some strange reason to testify. I have no idea why they would do that. And so she said she led his family, the murdered man's family, to his missing truck. And the truck, okay. She led the missing, the family to the missing truck. That's what she says. It doesn't say that that's what happened. That's what she says. She says she's communicated several times with this spirit. And that his family should forgive the persons who beat him and, and strangled him before dumping his body in a swamp. Now, I don't care what she says that the spirit of this guy is communicating, because that's all nonsense. Of course, she's not communicating with him. And so she says she's a clairvoyant medium and all this other stuff. And she says that she was the murdered man's sister came to see her and that she was given a picture of the man and she moved her finger over it of the picture of this guy, Andre. And I was looking for vibrations, whatever that means. 
And she could picture him in the truck, sitting beside a man with long blonde hair. She saw water. It's New Orleans. A long bridge with railroad tracks and a pain in her head, meaning that the guy was telling her he had pain in the head. She closed her eyes and moved a finger on the state of the map, and I felt a tingling, and she stopped, and her finger stopped near the area wherever that was inside down. We don't know what size a map is. We have no clue. We don't even know if this happened. This is just what she's testifying. And I told, she's saying this medium, I told the sister, you should get somebody as quick as possible to that location. She also testified she knew he was dead, but she didn't tell the sister that because she didn't think he, she was prepared to hear that her brother had died. And that's it. I'll leave these links for you to find. So from what I've told you, and I, you can read the links yourself. Did the psychic help? Because she's testifying for some weird reason in a trial. And she says at the trial, I went to this, the sister came to me and I said, he will be found near water, uh, something about railroad tracks um, and a pain in his head and that he's going to be found near water, swampy, swamp, swamp area. And that's where he is. She doesn't say he's dead. She just says that's where he is, off the highway in a swamp. And it had been like, I think he disappeared on a Sunday. So this is like a Thursday whenever she finally goes to, the sister goes to this person. I don't understand why a psychic medium, if they sense the person is dead, why would you not tell them they're dead? Here's where you will find the body. Instead, she makes up something saying, oh, I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what was she saying? Are you saying that he, he, since Thursday, you know, since Sunday, he's like laying in a swamp, just laying there unable to move or something? And I don't, it, the whole story sounds really suspicious because again, we have no recording. We have no way of verifying the medium story. All we know is what she testified. And hopefully she didn't lie, but you know, you misremember and embellish things. And that's not really telling anybody that you saw, how is that solving the case? It just sounds like you're just getting in the way. She says she drew the family to the truck. So the family member are putting up missing flyers in the street and the truck drives by with the men in it. And the woman looks and says, that's my brother-in-law's truck. And then flags down the police officer. That is bringing the family members to the truck. I mean, are you really, are you really saying that's what you're doing? Because it's kind of lame. Why don't you? keep it from happening or something. I mean, why did he have to be murdered? I don't know. The whole thing just sounds so wishy-washy to me and fussy. So the whole idea is, did Reader's Digest, it's got 20 of these stories in it. Did Reader's Digest actually, they're promoting this saying that the psychic solved a crime or she helped with the crime and she testified. Well, yeah, she testified, but was it helpful? Doesn't that just kind of like waste people's time? The body wasn't, wasn't, I mean, if you're a psychic, right. Okay. Let's think about this a minute. You're a psychic that can, that can talk to dead people. Well, first off, there's no, nobody knows that there was, he was riding around the truck with these two other men. I don't know if one of the men who has had long blonde hair. The story is, is the guy was lured away from the pool hall where he's drinking with a woman. A woman lured him out and then they and then uh, she disappeared somewhere. And these two other guys got him and took him and killed him and then put his body in a couch and then put a piece of plywood and some curtains. So there's no saying that he was ever in the truck with these other two guys. Except 
whenever he was being taken to be dropped off in the cabin. I mean, in the couch. And the psychic didn't get a couch? And curtains being wrapped in curtains? And a piece of plywood at the bottom being nailed into the couch? Seems like an odd thing to miss if you're psychic, right? I mean, doesn't that seem a little odd? Anyway, I'm I'm willing to really listen to or read and understand if there is evidence of mediumship. I would love to have that be real. But the stuff that people give me and the arguments they make for mediumship, I'm sorry, it's not it's not even kindergarten good quality stuff. They say, oh, um, I'm not going to, I'm not looking at your video, Susan. I'm just here to comment on your video. I haven't watched it, but it's all crap <laughs> because mediumship is real. I know that because I had an experience or my brother had an experience or somebody told me something really funny that was obviously real years ago. Or I've had a reading from that psychic, so he's definitely real. I've been read two or three times. One woman told me, my son met Thomas John personally. I'm like, so have I. <laughs> and what does that mean? I mean, th the level of evidence we're getting isn't really good. This, this is some of the best stuff I've seen, which is pretty bad. At least, at least Rosemary Kerr uh exists and she actually did do uh test testify in a case didn't help anything but i don't know should we look at more of these in other videos i'm kind of wondering if we should you guys tell me um they're old stories 1987 where is rosemary kerr now Probably not alive. Oh, yeah, she died in 2015, so she's not alive anymore. So, you guys, I hope you like these videos where we're breaking down medium readings um, and or cases about mediumship. And we're learning together about how the tricks are done, how it looks like they claim to be um communicating with the dead i find it all very fascinating especially the the psychology of the of the of the sitter the person who's having this happen to them and how they're retrofitting it all to be real it's i think it's i think it's fascinating so please like please subscribe to my channel if you find these really interesting put that little bell on make it go ding so that whenever I upload something, you'll know, you'll be notified that, that I've uploaded something. So let's, let's take a look at maybe some more. I, I think, I, I think I could go for some more, but I'll do it in another video. I'm going to put the links to this in this uh, description of this video. Thanks y'all.